Today, I'm going to show you how to create a jar of Akami eggshells. The things we'll need to create our bottle of Akami eggshells is one glass bottle. And I opted for a glass stopper version. This is a 250 milliliter and it has the ground section there that um, will actually help it seal. And I picked this up during Halloween at Michael's last year. I like to stock up on a lot of stuff when it's Halloween and they have all kinds of different bottles and fillers and things out. But I'll also put a link to one in the description down below. We're going to need some silver alcohol ink, and I'm going to use the Tim Holtz silver, but the um, Hobby Lobby version or any other version usually works just as well. And if you already have some silver alcohol ink when we did our Sleek Easy's bottle, definitely you could use the same one. Then we're going to use some Q-tips, felt pads, and the stamper for the alcohol ink. We're going to use some brown cording, as well as some purple reindeer moss. I thought this would be a nice addition for the bottom of the bottle to help protect the eggs. I picked up these beads that have this like alcohol slick look that has our pretty teal and purple that just reminds me of the Akami feathers. And then this box one has a smaller version of it here, as well as some silver and a bunch of other cool colors in there. We're gonna use a cooking skewer to help with the moss. We will need scissors. Then we're gonna use some real eggshells. And if you don't wanna use real eggshells, you could definitely use some fake ones, but you're not gonna want it to be the kind that you get in like an Easter egg hunt, you'd want to use the ones that were like the craft eggs that are hollow on the inside and just solid plastic. Or you could definitely use paper mache eggs like we did with our larger Akami eggshells. So we'll talk about that more as we get into it, but today we're going to use real eggshells. And finally, we will need our label printed on sticker paper and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win a monthly potion bottle from me? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Patreon not your thing? Then become a member here on YouTube. You get customized emojis and icons to use in the comment section. Link is in the description down below. The first thing we're going to do is get our eggs silver. You don't need to wear gloves because if you get the alcohol ink on you, you can just use some rubbing alcohol to take it off. But I'm trying to protect my manicure here. So I'm going to use them just so I don't have to spend time cleaning up my hands, but it really isn't going to hurt you if it gets on your skin. Now, the thing with any of these metallic alcohol inks is that you really need to shake them up. You'll actually hear that there's the little thing in there that helps move around to really mix things up. And that's important. You want to make sure you have it good and mixed. Now, I will say I used the felt stamp pad. I tried it on a couple eggs and it works. However, the eggs are so fragile that you really want to make sure that you're careful. And so I actually found the Q-tip to be a little bit easier option for me when it came to the actual real eggshells. So to prep our eggshells, all I did was once the eggs were cracked, so, you know, if you're making breakfast on a weekend and you use a bunch of eggs, save the eggshells, rinse them out really good. If there's any of that, like, membrane showing on the inside, try to remove as much of that as possible. And then lay them out on a cooking sheet and put them in an oven that's basically the lowest temperature your oven will go, or even, like, 250 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever. Just something that's not crazy hot because you don't want to burn your eggshells. And just put them in for 10 to 20 minutes. So after 10 minutes, if they don't look like they're really dry, then go ahead and put them in for another 10. But that's just going to help sanitize them, really dry them up good, and just make sure they're ready for us to use them. Um, this is also a really great way to prep eggshells to put in a grinder to get them ready for, like, your garden to add calcium for your plants and things like that. But I thought... Okay, Okay, this will be perfect for us to make some silver eggshells. Now, you could definitely take the same paper mache eggs that we used for our bigger cracked in half eggshells that are featured in my book, The Wizard's Craft Book, as well as here on my YouTube channel, and you could just cut those into smaller pieces and put them in the jar, and that would still look really, really good. But I thought it'd be fun for us to try something different with these real eggshells, and it's just another way to recycle something that may otherwise just get thrown away. All right, so I'm going to take my silver ink here and I'm going to put a few drops on the egg and then I'm going to take my q-tip and we're just going to rub that ink around and as you do this your q-tip will absorb some of the ink and then it becomes even better at pushing the silver alcohol ink around but this is the first one we're doing with this so um it may pick up more of the ink than it lays down initially. And that's okay because you can go back over it with more. But as you can see, this is just super delicate, really easy to cover this. Now you could try to spray paint these, but I feel like the power of the spray paint would probably just push it 
all over the place. You wouldn't get an even coverage. You're going to get a bunch of like weird drips and things like that. So you could try it if you want to. Um, you could try painting these with a paintbrush again, though. You're going to have to be really careful and make sure that you have a very thin layer of paint on your paintbrush so that you don't damage your eggshells. Um, so that's why I felt like alcohol ink was a great medium for this. It dries super fast. It gives us that beautiful metallic -y sheen. It's not super thick. It's not going to, um, you know, add a bunch of like weight to the eggs that's not necessary. So I thought this was an easy way. So as you can see, we just kind of got like a rough silver on here. And now I'm going to hit it again with a couple more drops. And I'm going to kind of concentrate them up here at the top. And then we're going to rub them in to get a better coating on the egg that doesn't look so splotchy. And like I said, this goes super fast. So the really great part about this is if you get a little section of the egg that you don't feel like has enough coverage, just go back and do some more. You could also play with some like different techniques. You could add like a champagne to this if you didn't want it to be pure silver on the outside. I did try some glitter with like some spray adhesive, not a aerosol spray adhesive. It was a pump action one. So it actually like went on really nicely. And I did add some glitter to it, but I, it just didn't look, it didn't look right to me. It didn't look like when we did our paper mache eggs where it just added that really light, beautiful shimmer to the pearlized side. It just looked like a cheap Easter egg. So I didn't feel like it uh, gave us the look we wanted for this particular DIY. So I'm going to just leave these the really pretty silver. So like I said, this dries really fast. Not as fast as it would if it was just glass because this is a slightly porous material. So um, it does take just a couple seconds longer to dry than, say, the glass does, but not much really. Okay, so we're going to let that sit and dry, and I'll start another one. And then once this is dry, I'll see if there's any other spots I want to hit, and then we'll flip it over and do the inside. Now I've got all my eggs done inside and out and I'm going to let them sit and dry for a couple minutes. Now that all of our eggs are silver inside and out, we're going to prep our jar and then add them in. And some of these might have to break a little bit to fit in here, but that's okay because we did the inside and out. It doesn't really matter. It'll all still look silver. Okay, so we're going to uncork our little bottle here. And we're going to add a little bit of this purple reindeer moss to the very bottom of our jar. One, it's going to add a little bit of padding so that our eggs don't just break going into the jar itself. But two, I think it just adds a little bit of color. And I feel like Newt, if he was packing these up for potions, that it would have a little something on the bottom to just, again, protect him a little bit. And just in case you guys didn't know... Akami eggshells are used in several potions as well as uh, a hair care line that Gilderoy Lockhart tried to make, but because it used so many rare Akami eggshells, it uh, didn't really pan out for him. But it is a key ingredient in Felix Felicis, as well as several other potions. So this being in a apothecary for people to buy would not be uncommon. But I'm sure it would be expensive because the shells not only are pure silver, but they're rare as well. Okay, so I've got a little bit of reindeer moss in there. And now we can start adding our eggs. So I'm actually going to start with a few of our little pieces here, just because I feel like they'll kind of help fill in some of the little gaps at the bottom. And then we're going to add in some of our egg pieces. So like I said, some of these might need to get broken because obviously it's not going to fit in whole, but uh, some of them may. And truthfully, on some of these, I may just see how much give I can get to get as much in there as I can. 
And if it breaks, that's okay. So for like this one, I think I'll snap part of this side off and then see if I can feed this part in. Oop. No, you may just get a bunch of broken pieces, but you know what? I think that's okay because actually like when they rattle around in here, the sound even sounds very metallic. It doesn't sound just like a broken eggshell. Try to carefully skinny this one down to see if I can get most of this one in. Yeah, okay, good. We were able to get quite a bit of that one in and I'm actually gonna see if I can try to flip it over so we have more of that rounded outside instead of it just catching in with the other shells in there which is looking like it's easier said than done okay there we go good all right just wanted it to kind of show some differences in there I didn't want them to all start to feed inside each other and I don't want so many in here that it just looks packed I want it to be enough that it looks like it's enough for the potion but not so much that you know it doesn't you can't tell what they are good okay that one went in most of the way whole so that's cool I'll put its other little piece in there and I may see if I can kick that over here Perfect. I think that's just enough that you can tell that they're the Akami eggshells and that they are silver. But it still has some of that negative space, which I think just kind of helps add to it a little bit. Cool. So then we're going to cap this up. So with these where they have that like sanded edge on there, you put them in and then you kind of turn them. And when you do that, it actually helps both sides of that sanded area lock in and create a seal. Now, all you have to do to open it is just re-twist it and you can reopen it, but that gives you a really great easy seal. Now that we have our eggs in the bottle, we can go ahead and put our label on and I went around the outside edge with a matching marker just like I always do. And we're going to peel the backing paper off. I think that looks straight. Go ahead and right. And I intentionally made the label an egg shape. I thought that was kind of a nod to the fact that it's eggshells too. All right, so now we can go ahead and decorate the top of this. So since this has got a brown vibe on here, I wanted to do a dark brown cording. And I thought I wouldn't do the super thick one. I thought I would do this uh, thinner brown cording. Again, I picked this up at Michael's. It was in the um, jewelry section. And we're gonna wrap this just like we have hundreds of other bottles before. And I'll put a card above in case you want to watch my tips and tricks video where I explain all the ins and outs of potion making, including wrapping your bottle. All right, now that we've got that good and wrapped, we can do a little bit more embellishment. So like I said, I have these lovely beads that are just on some cording here on this bracelet. So I'm actually gonna cut that off. Right, so I just took a pair of scissors and cut my little bracelet here. So I just cut the strand and I will save the lobster claw because I might be able to use it down the line. And we're gonna just use a couple of these beads. But I thought these were super pretty and I thought they definitely went with the iridescent Akami feather vibe. And then, like I said, in this pack, there is the smaller one. Okay, so yeah, in here, we have these little tiny ones that match, that match our bigger ones. 
that are trying to roll all over my studio. Okay, I apologize. I thought my camera was rolling, but apparently my battery had died. So, you haven't missed much. All I did was string onto my cording a large bead, this silvery bead, and then a small one. And then I just did the opposite over here. So I did the small one, the silvery bead, and the large one. And that's because we're going to tie it around here, and then I'm going to knot it and then have them dangling. And we'll have two little teardrop type things that kind of have that oil slick look to them and a little bit touch of silver on the side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is at my very end, I'm just going to knot this to create uh, the stopper for our first teardrop. And if your string is a little thick, um, what I like to do is take a little bit of Mod Podge or glue and just put it on the end and then twist it, kind of let it harden a minute, and it creates like a natural needle to help thread beads that look like they should fit, but they're not wanting to go on. It just kind of helps keep your string from unraveling and keeps it a little more secure and steady while you're trying to mess with your beads. All right, so because the holes on these are basically just big enough to run it on this, I don't have to do a double knot. So I'm just going to knot the end of that and then cut this. Okay. And then I'm going to push that a little bit just to make sure it's good and tight. Okay, so that's good. So now we have our first little teardrop here. And we're going to go ahead and tie this around the neck of our bottle. And we're going to go ahead and knot this off and then we'll worry about tying off the other one when we know what position we want it to be in. Okay, so I think I want it to be about there. I'm going to go ahead and double knot it. All right. And then this other one. I think I just want it to be a little bit lower, maybe in there. So we'll put our knot about here. Push those up a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, so I'm just going to make sure that knot is good and tight, and we'll cut that. Perfect. All right, so now we have our little teardrop end here. And I just like that it adds another little touch of silver with the colors of the Akami feathers. And after we have our little bead embellishment done, I think that's it. We have our Akami eggshells. Perfect for assisting in brewing potions. This will be a great addition to our potion and prop collection we've been making along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.